The original motion is perfectly acceptable and allows for much of the spirit of the amendment. For example, the publication of the Grey Report would be automatic upon the conclusion of the Metropolitan Police's work. There was no need to complicate matters. The Ukraine situation is of huge importance, but the invasion of a sovereign nation by a dictatorial aggressor should not be a reason why we should accept lower standards ourselves. Yeah. I have told the Prime Minister to his face that I think he is doing a good job robustly supporting the Ukrainian government and Her Majesty's government, along with our nation, can be proud of their role and generosity. Let us give credit where credit is due. <coughs> However, much as though I may have tried, I cannot reconcile myself to the Prime Minister's continued leadership of our country and the Conservative Party. I say this by means of context, so that everyone, particularly my constituents and colleagues, can understand my position without hiding my views with ever more elaborate disguises. To those constituents who disagree with me, I appreciate their anger, just as I can the anger of colleagues. However, say what you mean and mean what you say. I submitted my letter of no confidence to our, our, our honourable friend, the member for Alderman and Sale West, in December of last year. I did so for the following reason. It followed the leak of the Allegra Stratton mock press conference video. In that video, I believe she did nothing wrong. She nervously laughed and sought to make light of an embarrassing situation. So to see her crying on her doorstep, <coughs> feeling the full weight of responsibility and anger of a country was deeply moving. Yeah. And I felt immensely sorry for her. And I say this, I hope that she is well yeah. and that she will be able yeah. to continue her distinguished career. Yeah. Yeah. But what alarmed me most was later that evening, a press preview of the winter COVID Plan B measures <coughs> brought forward, brought forward to try to move matters on. Now, we debated those measures at length, but we can agree, perhaps not on their extent or their importance, but they nonetheless sought to compel or restrict what people in this country could do. I therefore thought to myself, if a government was prepared to bring such measures forward earlier in order to distract from its own embarrassment, that the Prime Minister was no longer fit to govern. I care deeply about my colleagues. I know that a number are struggling at the moment. We have been working in a toxic atmosphere. The parliamentary party bears the scars of misjudgments of leadership. There can be few colleagues on this side of the House, I would contend, who are truly enjoying being members of parliament at the moment. It is utterly depressing to be asked to defend the indefensible. Each time, part of us withers. Now, I have questioned my place in this party in recent months. And perhaps that's symptomatic of a swathe of our voters in the country. But I tell them firmly, I'm not going anywhere. And I urge them to stick with us at the forthcoming elections. But for us to maintain their trust and confidence, we must be seen to do the right thing. It is our responsibility. It is the Conservative Parliamentary Party's responsibility. We must stop delegating and delaying our political judgment. Yeah. We each only have our own limited and imperfect integrity. We can't keep spending it on, spending it on others who we cannot be sure will not let us down. Now, I have great empathy for all of those who worked at Number 10 and in the Cabinet Office. They bore an immense burden and worked in the most intense pressure. They worked hard and they made sacrifices. And I also extend that same empathy 
to my right honourable friend, the Prime Minister, who knows more than most the personal challenges and personal battles that, come, that came from the pandemic. But the matter before us is one at the heart of this institution, of our Parliament. I love this place, believing it to be a place of high ideals and purpose. What is said here matters. Quite apart from the Facebook clips about roundabouts and drains in our constituencies, or indeed the confected anger to wind people up, it should be a place venerated by those of us given the singular honour of being sent here. Yeah. 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 Now, of course, it can be a pantomime, a farce, turgidly boring, obscure, <laughs> but it should always be reasonably honest. Yeah. And it is for that, I hope not naive principle, that I cannot support the amendment and I will vote for the main motion. <laughs>